Does Pro Tools keep on bugging out during your session? Crashing, stopping, giving you CPU errors? <laughs> well, there just might be a couple quick fixes we can do to help eliminate that. What up YouTube, this is Wavy Wayne, your Pro Tools expert, wavywayne.com. How y'all doing today? That's good, I'm pretty good myself. Today, I'm gonna be answering a question directly from Instagram. If you're not already following me, make sure you do so, at wayne.wave, and shoot me your questions, hit me on the DM, whatever, so I, we can get your questions answered on a future video, all right? But the question today that I'm gonna be answering is, how do I stop Pro Tools from uh, giving me so many CPU errors and how can I maximize my CPU usage, all right? So we're gonna talk about that today and just give you a few pointers and things that you might not have thought about that can definitely affect your CPU usage while you are running a Pro Tools session. So one of the first things that I wanna go over is to be sure that all other unnecessary applications are closed. So. On the Mac, they have this cool feature, Command Tab, that allows you to see any other running applications. Now, right now, I actually need all these applications. I'm using my QuickTime to record my screen. Uh, Universal Control, that's for my PreSonus station, and the UAD meter, um, I probably don't really need that, so I can just hit Command Q to quit that. But if you have any other applications open, Chrome, a YouTube video playing in the background, maybe you got Logic open or FL Studio or something like that, minimizing the applications that are open will allow your CPU to free up its resources. Again, the CPU isn't just there for Pro Tools. Every application, every function that your computer is doing is gonna be using some of that CPU. So just by shutting down and closing those applications before you start your Pro Tools session, that's gonna help you to automatically free up some of those resources. Sometimes we'll run into errors simply because our startup drive is full or close to full and that will slow down everything. If you ever saw a message that your startup drive, your startup disk is almost full, or that it is full, that is definitely gonna slow down your situation. Or if you have an external hard drive that you are recording to, if that is full or almost full, then um, that's definitely gonna slow it down too and cause some kind of errors uh, during your session. So let's make sure that always, we wanna empty out our trash can. So if you have anything in your trash bin, that's one way to go ahead and just delete any unnecessary files that are on your computer and be sure to check your downloads your desktop and all those other places for unnecessary files that you might be able to delete and clear up hard drive space i know it seems like um, the cpu isn't affected by the hard drive but it is as the hard drive space starts to fill up the cpu has problems working as efficiently as it should so make sure you delete any files that are unnecessary another great way to reduce cpu usage is to use uad plugins whenever possible universal audio has a, a plugin package that uses its own dsp so if you have a universal audio interface like an apollo twin or uh, x8 or x6 whatever any of those uad interfaces they all come with dsp the UAD plugins run natively off of the DSP inside of its own hardware. So your computer is not bogged down by processing UAD plugins. So the more UAD plugins you use in exchange for any other native plugins or wave plugins that you might be using uh, that are native using your computer's own processing power, your computer CPU, um, you, then you free up that power for other things, all right? One way that not only helps with the CPU power, but just makes mixing um, a whole lot more efficient and fast is by using submasters. Now, I've talked about this in earlier videos, and I'll make another video soon, but you can find my video on how to create and use submasters. I'll leave a link to that. But using a submaster, basically, if we look at my mix window here, Basically, if you notice what I have here, I have three lead vocals, right? Now these three lead vocals are all stacks of the same hook, right? Let's just go ahead and play that. I'm gonna mute these other submasters real quick. Let's hear what we got here. All 
right, bet. So we can hear that that's all one note. It's just stacked up in unison there uh, for that main part of the chorus. So we decided to record three takes and stack them up. All right, I have one uh, straight up the middle, a couple pan left and right here. And what I'm doing is utilizing an aux input track as the sub master, sub master. Now I am doing some individual processing on each one of these tracks, but I'm also doing processing on all three of those tracks as a whole by using a sub master. Basically what a sub master does is it will combine those three tracks so they can be processed at once. So instead of me using three of these EQs, I'm able to just use the one and it will EQ all three of those tracks as a group. Instead of me using three of these C4 uh, multiband compressors, I'm able to just use that one and then we'll uh, compress the entire group, all right? And that will, of course, save you a lot of CPU power. Another great mixing tip that will also save you CPU power is to make sure that you are using time-based effects as sends and returns in your session. Make sure that reverbs, delays, and flangers and other type effects like that are being shared throughout the session. If you have a reverb plugin inserted on every single track in your session, that's definitely going to cause you to um, eat up a lot of unnecessary CPU. If you purchase a template from wavywayne.com, your session will look something like this to where I have all of my aux inputs, my um, effects returns set in the session, and I am sharing them throughout uh, the tracks in the session. So I have one, sometimes I may use two or three different reverbs, but again, multiple tracks are sharing this same reverb sound. So anywhere where you see a send and I'm sending along to the reverb, it's all coming through to this one reverb track. I noticed that a lot of new engineers will just take a reverb plugin or a delay or a flanger or something and insert it on every single track. That is gonna eat up your CPU very fast. Learn how to use a send and return. I have a video for that as well. I'll leave a link for that somewhere. Um, but yes, learn how to use a send and return that will save you a lot of CPU power. Now, of course, I've saved the best for last. Um, this is a number one rule. This is probably the easiest, most effective way to get more power from your CPU. And that's simply by changing your hardware buffer size, okay? Your hardware buffer size determines how much information is gonna be processed at one time by your computer's CPU. The higher the hardware buffer size, the more information that can be processed, but that also increases the latency while you're recording. So while you're recording, you wanna keep the hardware buffer size set low, and when you're mixing, you wanna set it to the highest that you possibly can, so you can use as many plugins and as many tracks as you want. So to set the hardware buffer size, you do this by going up to the setup menu, choosing playback engine, and here it is, the HW buffer size, all right? Now that buffer size, again, while you're recording, it's good to hover around that 64 samples, maybe lower if your computer can handle that. But when you start to mix, if you know you're only about to do some mixing, then go ahead and bump it all the way up to 1,024 samples, and this will allow Pro Tools to have all, all of the processing power that it needs. But don't forget, when, you time, when it's time to go back to recording, to go back into the Playback Engine dialog box and change the hardware buffer size to something lower so that your clients don't experience so much latency in their headphones while recording, all right? Can you think of any other ways to reduce the amount of CPU power that's being used by your Pro Tools session? If so, you already know you can drop it in the comments below. I hope this video has been helpful. If you need professional mixing services, you can shoot me an email or visit my website, wavywayne.com, where you can also find custom Pro Tools recording and mixing templates, all right? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to